I am very excited. I am Meg Tucker. You are now watching a Meg Tucker Talks with, this is our chance to spotlight some of the authors that we are so grateful to get to read. But we are joined today by Lisa Unger, who wrote The Stranger Inside, along with a million other books. Lisa, good <laughs> afternoon. Hi, thanks for having me. We are so thrilled to get to chat with you, Lisa. Now, where are you allowed to share where where we are talking to you today? Yeah, I'm in the, I'm in, on the Gulf Coast of Florida in the in the Tampa Bay area. Okay, so I am in Alberta, Canada, where we have about a foot of snow on the back deck. You do not. I do oh it? My God. Yeah, it happened overnight. Now, is it true that you have a labradoodle? I do. Okay. I do. His name yeah. is Jack. Jack. Okay, so we, I love how your tone of voice changed the minute. <laughs> um, you are talking to a black lab mama named Oliver. Oh, he's very handsome. And he's so handsome. And he actually, he's at camp today when, when we have lots going on. We send him to this camp where he runs like the wind with all of his friends. Same. We do, do the same. Thing. Yeah. Isn't it great? In fact, I think my husband is probably downstairs with him throwing throwing the ball because he knows that if he doesn't, then he's going to come up here and want the ball from. So, yeah. I understand. I understand. This is quite a book, The Stranger Inside. So you are a New York Times and best-selling author. Your books have been published in 26 different languages worldwide. You've sold millions of copies. And here mm. we are today just having a little chat. What? How is your life, Lisa? This is such an exciting life. <laughs> you know, it's interesting because, like, I have been a writer all my life. Okay. Since I was a kid, I never, ever wanted to do anything else. So I feel very grateful that I, I get to make my living doing what I love. It's a true gift and a blessing. I wish that you could see on my notes, I do always a little bit of prep, literally, did you always know you wanted to be a writer? I know you probably get asked it daily, but you just answered the question. So there was never a question for you. No, never. And, uh, you know, I, I've been writing since I was a kid. You know, obviously all, all writers, of course, are readers first. This is where we fall in love with story. And my mother was a librarian yes. and also a great lover of, you know, every type of story, you know, not just books, but also theater and film and all that and so she really shared that with me from a very early age um my dad was like you know is I don't know, do you ever stop being an engineer I don't think so right, right. the little <laughs> ring engineer. says no yep right <laughs> exactly and um he was like kind of the opposite you know like he was all nonfiction, and I mean, he didn't really like to go to the movies with my mom so she was always bringing me with her like to things that were just kind of wildly inappropriate for my age. <laughs> but perfect. <laughs> exactly. Yes. And then we had this big these big shelves of books always and then there was like zero censorship, right? So if I could reach it, I could read it. Like no but that was just kind of the the culture that I grew up in. But my dad was very clear that, you know, writer is like not a not a job, right? He's like, that's great, you know, that you can string a few coherent sentences together by, you know, when you graduate from college, you need to get a real job. Oh boy, did you show him? Uh, eventually, but I did get a real job. <laughs> when well, I graduated from college, I was like, not surprisingly, even though I had been writing, I even started my first novel when I was 19 years old. Um, not surprisingly, I didn't really have the confidence to pursue that. Um, so I uh, did the next best thing. I went into publishing, and uh, I worked in publishing for the next 10 years while I was a closet writer. Was that so tough, Lisa, being in publishing and having to look at all of the, the, the manuscripts or the scripts that are coming into you and thinking, oh, mine would be better. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I never really, I never really had those kind of thoughts, believe it or not, because, you know, I was a little bit disconnected from my, the idea of myself as a writer. Like I hadn't given myself permission mm -hmm. to be that thing. You know, I didn't think I was good enough. I never had any feelings that like, oh, I'm so great. I should be doing this. Like I didn't think I was good enough, really. I mean, and uh, I, and then I was, I was not on the editorial side. I was actually on the publicity side. Okay. 
So, I mean, what I was, I was like living in New York City, I was in my 20s, I was basically just throwing parties and traveling with authors and doing this like job that I happened to be pretty good at. And it, you know, that job just kept getting bigger and bigger. And I kept, you know, and I started to define myself more by that than I did by my writing. Right. Then you always had this kind of moment in my life, this moment where I realized, you know, everything was wrong pretty much. I was with the wrong guy. I was like, you know, devoting 110% of myself to a job that I didn't love. Yep. And that the only thing I ever wanted to do, I was just kind of letting it fade to nothing. Mm -hmm. And so I figured I could, you know, I could live with spectacular crash and burn failure, but I wasn't going to be able to live with the idea that I would have to live, look at myself five years, 10 years down the road and go, hey, you know what? You never even tried. And I couldn't live with that. So that's when I started to get very serious about my writing. You're Carrie Bradshaw, legit. <laughs> legit. <laughs> Living in New York City, parties, writing. That's yeah. who you are. <laughs> my shoes weren't as good, I will say that. Right, and you probably used your oven, I'm guessing. I, don't know. I did, I did. <laughs> So how, how do you, I guess, looking back at your storied career, now that you've written so many books, do you still look at each beginning of a book the same way? Do you still tackle it the same way? Or have you, would you say you've yeah. changed a lot as a writer? I mean, I think that my, my process, my, hopefully, you know, so I started my first book when I was 19 years old. And, you know, when I finish, you know, I'll be, I'll be 50 next year. So I'm hoping that, you know, the book that I started when I was 19 years old is unrecognizable from the one I finished when I was, you know, 49, like whatever, you know, that's, a, that's a long space of time. So in writing for that long, I hope I'm better than I was when, yes. <laughs> when I started because that, you know, that is my goal is to get better with every single book. Yep. Um, but, you know, the process itself has not changed as, very much you know I'm always there's always a spark there's always like kind of a germ for every book and then there's always a voice you know there might be like a swath of research between germ and voice like where I'm obsessed with a topic and I'm just trying to you know get as much information in my head as I can about what I'm curious about and then while I'm doing that I uh, oftentimes I will hear a voice or voices and it's those voices that I follow through the manuscript. So everything starts there. I don't have an outline. Um, I don't know, you know, day to day who's going to show up or really? what they're going to do. Yes. I don't um, really, uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure what the book is about. And I certainly don't know how it's going to end. <gasps> you don't you not okay. and so <laughs> and so every every novel is sort of um an act of faith I guess you know I always feel like the story is there and I'm just trying to find it through it's these character like it, voices it takes over you and then you just have it comes through yeah. you now yeah. uh, if they'll kill me if I don't jump into the book uh, itself I could talk to you for hours, but how long did it take you to write The Stranger Inside? It takes about a year, first draft, not, yes. like nine months to 12, nine to 12 months to, to do a, to do a first draft. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And how did you come up with the title, which I always love, and I thank you for using the title in the book. And I don't know if every author does that, but when I little nerd thing of me but when I'm reading it I'm like oh there's the title okay now it makes sense to me <laughs> how did you come up with the title well you know that actually was not my title for the book oh it was not dun, dun, dun. this is where we drop all the bombshells <laughs> <laughs> that was so the title you know the the title of the book has become I mean, maybe it always has been, but more in the, in recent years, it has fallen strictly into the area of sales and marketing. Okay. So if you turn in your book with the title on it, that your that sales and marketing team is just like, we hate it. It's not going to work. 
Okay. Then that title gets changed. <laughs> you can't be very married to it is what you're you saying? You really can't be. Um, and it is, it can be challenging because I do tend to get like super invested in my title. So the, um, so the original title for this book, and if you've read it, you'll understand why, was The Night Jar. Absolutely. Yeah. So that was my. Oh, yes. That, yes. Right. So that was my title for the book. But, you know, I, there was apparently um, a thing about birds. So apparently there is a lot like a pretty big segment of the population that hates birds. That okay. has an, aver an actual aversion to birds. I'm, <laughs> this is it's for real. No, no, my old co-host in radio literally would say the word and he would lose his mind. So it's <laughs> one of them, I guess. Yes. So this is this was unknown to me. I did not I did not realize that this was um a thing. But <laughs> <laughs> you can't call your book that because then the bird people won't buy them. Right. And I was like, okay. And so then it becomes what it, you know, I have a wonderful editor who I love and who I trust you know, implicitly. And um, so it becomes like a collaboration. So it comes becomes like the say, I just went to get, uh, again, through this again for the book that comes out next year. Right. But I, which I can't talk about at all. Okay. But I, um, you know, we go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And finally, somebody come up with something where everybody's like, yes, that's it. So it's like this huge, like, stressful, like kind of drama that takes place. It's called Night but, Jar 2. <laughs> <laughs> I her too. So, but the funny thing was at my launch event, which was like a big event here in, in the Tampa Bay area, um, the interviewer asked me about the title for the book and I told them this story about birds. Yeah. And uh, the, this later on, I ran into my, you know, a friend of mine who was like, uh, she's a, like a long time reader and she's like telling me how she had just read um, a book by an author that we both love. And she's like, I almost didn't buy it. I was like, why not? She's like, because it had a bird on the cover. This is insane to me. Off. I was like, I am <laughs> shocked. <laughs> Who knew? Who no, knew? I had no idea, but it's a whole thing. And so that was also, they were like, we don't know, you know, what the night, nobody knows what a night jar is. I was like, no, I get that. But like, isn't that kind of intriguing? Yes, very. Maybe, you know, like, wouldn't that be like, I mean, for me as a reader, I'd be like, Ooh, what's that? But apparently that that's not. That's hilarious. Okay. Okay, Lisa, here we go. Did Greta? It was very relevant. Stranger Inside, of course. It's oh, absolutely. Uh, it's on many right. character levels. On, very, on a lot of different levels. So it actually does wind up being a great title for the book. Okay, did Greta know more? Did, did Greta see? I think Greta saw more. Yeah. I love Greta. You know, you're the first person to bring her up. <laughs> Oh, we loved her. My girlfriend Sarah was in the club too. We were talking moments before this, and and we we have a couple questions, and that was one of them. And we're also trying to picture who she would play, who would play her, because I do that when I read a book. I think, do I think of a celebrity? I almost want to say Holly Hunter. I don't know why. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because I, but I also know she, she has that ability to go to that space. Yes. You know what I mean? Because she can be very together and tight and beautiful, but she can also go to that, like, sort of edgy space. Did Greta know more than we were told, do you think? I think she did. I think she I think did. She, I think. Oh, okay. I feel like re I'm not a warped person, but I'm talking to you who wrote this book, so I feel safe, like I can ask you. No, okay. you know, really, you're safe. Trust okay, me. okay. Did you leave out Tess's death details on purpose? I feel like that's something that throughout I was wondering. I was so. I, and I have actually, I have a piece of fan mail with this question that I have not yet answered because I've had to really think about it. I've had I don't to really want to know, but I'm wondering was it a right. on purpose? Um, I feel like it wasn't necessary. You know, I, in, in my stories, you know, my stories are very dark. The things I write about are, are very dark. And, um, I, and I go there only because I'm trying to shine a light inside. Do you understand? Uh, yeah. You know, I consider myself like a spelunker 
And I want to shimmy into the dark spaces of the human psyche to figure out what's there. Yeah. And that is the point of The Stranger Inside. The, the story in The Stranger Inside is about what happens after extreme trauma. And nobody except the trauma victim can truly understand the horror of what happened at any given moment. And it's deeply, it's deeply personal. So it's deeply personal, you know, for the, for, the, um, for the trauma survivor. You know, what might be trauma for one person is not necessarily trauma for another person. So for me, the, the story of The Stranger Inside is what happens after what happens to Hank and to Tess and to Laura, later Rain, like this, the, and, and what happened to each of them is very, very different. What happened to Hank is different from what happened to Tess is, what, is different from what happened to Laura. And this trauma, you know, which takes Tess from them and then sunders this very deep, you know, childhood friendship, right? Like that is, that's where all my questions are. Any graphic, and there is some graphic violence in the book, you know, related to Hank getting away and, you know, other, um, other plot elements, but, um, that particular moment in time, I felt like it, any description of that is just a horror show. I'm glad you didn't. I'm glad you didn't. When I read it, I felt the moment that the story started talking about that day, I had such an uneasy feeling and Mm -hmm. rightfully so and it stayed with Mm -hmm. me throughout and the way you kind of would revisit it I appreciated because you didn't give it to us all at once and we still Mm -hmm. had to learn more and learn more and then go back and I thought that was a really neat way to tell the story I I wondered why it wasn't told but I understand why it wasn't and I'm glad you didn't we don't I don't need to I just think that there's a lot there it's not that there are places I won't go or places that I don't think I should go or places even that I don't want to go it's just that that's not the story. You know, what happened and, and any depiction of what had ha- any graphic depiction of those final moments of what Hank saw, um, it's just, I thought gratuitous and also yeah. not, not contributing in any substantive way to the story itself. I feel like this book, we are talking to Lisa Unger, The Stranger Inside, I feel like this book is going to haunt me for a really long time. And I know that it, that's partially the point. You speak so elo- eloquently and so deeply from a psychological standpoint. And I know at the end you cite a couple of different mm-hmm. um, books and, and people and, and to help you through all of that. But This is part of what you do so masterfully, Lisa. You are, it it is like a study in psychology. And I feel like someone who has been through something could benefit from reading your books if you haven't already been told that. I I have been, I actually have heard from, from people and that that's very meaningful to me that people felt that they found like some insight or some understanding me. Of course, I'm not, I'm not a doctor and not even, (laughs) Not even close, although I probably missed my calling, right? I probably should have been. Right, right. <laughs> but I do, um, you know, I, I do feel a tremendous responsibility to write authentically about things like trauma. Um, and I do have, a, you know, a great fascination uh, with, you know, um, the, the ways in which people deal with the aftermath of trauma. Um, so I, and I've done a lot of research and I continue to do a lot of research and try to under, try to understand and write about things in a way that is, um, authentic and, you know, hopefully offering insight and, um, just with tremendous compassion for my characters and also for anybody who ha- who has suffered. I love that at, toward the end, Hank's girlfriend, Beth, mm-hmm. he tells her. And just that, just that, those two sentences where we then learned, wow, she knows. She yeah. knows what she needs to know. Right. What it's she almost, needs to 
what she needs to know, which is what we needed to know, I think. Right. right. Do, and do, it's helpful for him. Do you ever consider Hank and Lara Rain? La Rain. Did you ever consider them getting together and staying together? Yeah. <laughs> You're also not the first person to ask about that. I think oh, I know. you can really tell that deep level wanted that. And I, I think on some level I wanted that too. You know, I could kind of see you know, there's this tremendous bond between them, you know, even at, even, you know, they, they have these, these shared circumstances and they know each other in a way that no one else can ever know them. Um, and that is very, I think, you know, very attractive, I think to, to the reader, like you think, you know, you want, you kind of feel like you want that, but I, I guess I know enough about trauma and I know enough about, you know, those type of situations, you know, those kind of extreme relationships that good. <laughs> they can't really, they can't really survive the day to day of, you know, the work a day yes. relationship. Do you yes. know what I mean? Like, yes. here's the kid who's taking out the trash, you know, did you pay the electric bill? Like, no. those kind of extreme you know, extreme relationships don't necessarily translate into the kind of relationship that Rain has with Greg. Yes. And that maybe with Rain a, can a solid. With that. Right. He's a solid guy and he's not perfect. The relationship is not perfect. Their marriage is not perfect. No one's is. Do you um accept the ones we have with our dogs? Okay. Um <laughs> that that is perfect. My, yeah, my dog's is actually quietly laying here now. Oh. Two questions. Did you picture yeah. anyone in your mind, celebrities? Like if someone said, we're making this into a movie, do you envision any people as you're writing the characters? I never, I never do. Never. Um, while I'm writing, I never, I never, like they're so unique. The characters are so real um, that it's always hard to think, you know, who would play, who would play Hank? And then you think, well, Hank. But like Hank doesn't exist. Right, right, right. <laughs> he does. So like if it were anybody else, um, I I recently thought that Jake Gyllenhaal would make an amazing Hank. Yes, he Yes. Would. I was like, wow, that would be awesome. And then just today, I don't know if you're familiar with um the he's a, a a blogger in I think he's in New York, Gar indeed reads. No, but I'm going to look him up. Yeah, you should look him up. He's super, he's super cool. And he does these little, um, he does these little collages of the book and then act, he picks actors and actresses for all your characters. Love. It's super cute. It, he, and he did The Stranger Inside and he had Alex Skarsgård as yes. Hank. And I was like, oh, that's, that's, kind of that, that yeah. work. And I that. thought Emily Blunt for Rain. Emily yeah. Blunt, and who was I also feeling? Uh, I'll have to think about it. We we always open this up to once your chat airs because people yeah. once they finish, I'll share those their uh, who they think. Would you ever write a sequel of any sort or carry the characters on? I I don't know. It's very difficult because it really is for me about character voice. I would never say never because there have been times where I felt like I'm, you know, I'm done with this. And then, you know, the story keeps going and I keep writing it. You know, that was like sort of the case for a lot of the Hollows books. And then um, I, you know, the, or a character might come yeah. forward. Like I think that this is the end of the story and then that character winds up in another book. Yes. And so that, that character has more to say. So, and there is at the end of this book, there is a feature there's a, a thing what? that could uh, I'm getting my copy. might be a hook into something what? else, a continuation of the story. Oh, is it her because her pod, the podcast? Maybe the podcast or also because of the thing that is missing at the end of the book. <gasps> Not kill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's so that is something that has been um, bothering me. 
it's so, bothering me too because yeah, so it, I, and this happens like you know and this is sort of part of it this is a feature of how I write you know my process is very deeply it's deeply subconscious to the degree that like I'll be writing and I'm like I don't even know what this is like there'll be something in the story and I'm like I don't even know what it is but I know well enough to know that I better leave it there because 50 pages or 70 pages I'm going to be like oh god right that thing so like I so that's kind of what happens to me and so often in my books there's a piece or you know a moment at the like at the end that doesn't quite fit and I tend to I tend to leave it you know and because I know that the way my mind works, I'm going to be in, I might be in another book or in a short story, and that piece is going to come come forward for me. It's perfect, but it is yeah. perfect because it did leave us thinking, that did who else, like, who, you know, like, who else would, you know, because we talk a little bit about the, the psychology, right, like, who feels they have a right to deliver justice and that there is a, you know, there does need to be a bit of the sociopath involved in that kind of decision-making process. And it has to be, there has to be at least a tremendous amount of arrogance to think I, I have a right, I know what's right and wrong and I have a right to deliver punishment. So who else could have such a, such a uh, delusion about themselves and what might they do from that space? I I think it's wildly interesting and it's funny because I am such a sensitive person I am so rom-com yet I have this whole side of me that is just that's why I started this genre of a book club and I think that I'm not alone I think there's so many of us that lead perfectly well-adjusted lives I have a yeah. psychology degree so my head yeah. always goes down that road but right. you just created an unbelievable novel they're calling it a best book of fall 2019 yeah. people magazine boston globe pop sugar she reads how does that not make you go i'm awesome like how does how do you retain a regular life i never and, have any feelings that even approach that <laughs> really i know i know well i am like you know for me it's all about the writing you know, I, it's wonderful when the book, when a book is well received, like it, you know, it's such a, such a joy and such an exciting thing. People, you know, love the work because I pour everything I have into it. I literally do. Every book represents the absolute pinnacle of my ability at the time of its writing. Like I have never written a book that I didn't turn in thinking this is literally the best I can do. Not the best. <laughs> Not the best. Ever, but like the best I can do I know that I've given everything creatively that I have to this work and that I have every day tried to be a better writer than I was the day before and I know and I know that and that's the thing that drives me and that always motivates me day to day in my writing do you celebrate in a certain way do you have a ritual or something that you do at the end of every book once it's out into the world yeah, I start another one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is it. Perfect time to wrap up. What are you working on? What do you want to plug? What can we follow you on? Oh, well, I'm, you know, I'm ridiculously easy to find at, you know, lisaunger.com. I, my three, like, sort of platforms are Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And, you know, I do interact with my readers in, in real time on those platforms for sure. Um, I'm at work, I'm like sort of in the, um, just finishing up uh, the editorial work on my next novel, which will publish in fall 2020, but you're going to have to have me back on. Absolutely. <laughs> you uh, have fans for life and you are welcome anytime. Next Thank time you. we'll have our dogs with us for sure. Yeah, so we it'll definitely, be it'll be a little bit more chaotic, but super fun. <laughs> Well, you know what? It's wonderful. I just want to say, too, thank you for taking the time. Um, it's so neat to follow you on Twitter and to see you all supporting each other. It really is yeah. cool that in the in the last two months since I started this, following authors on Twitter, seeing the love that you all share for each other is yeah. really neat. I have uh, next month's book is Lie to Me, J.T. Ellison. Oh, and, JT. She's and she's excited to come on. Yeah, and she said so that great. about you. So do, oh. you, 
do you want to say anything to her now that we'll share with her next month? Yes, JT is, not only is she, you know, a stellar writer, she's also just such a generous spirit and like such an open, loving and, and giving friend. We spent a couple of days together in uh, in Nashville, um, just for my book t- for my book tour. I was on her television show, and we went to uh, Parnassus Books together. And just um, she's just a joy. She's like just a stellar human being. So I know you're gonna love the book, which is fantastic, and her as well. She's just a del- she's just a delightful person. Well, as are you, Lisa Unger, the Stranger Inside. If you haven't read it. Boy, just brace yourself because it's wonderful <laughs> and you're a real delight. So, Lisa, thank you so much. We will yeah. definitely stay in touch. And yes, uh, if we have any real casting decisions, we'll share those with you as well. Yeah, if you come up with, yeah, definitely share those with me if you come up with some ideas. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And we wish you a, a wonderful rest of your day. And thanks for thank talking you. to us. Thanks so much. Okay, bye.